Hi everyone, Miss Trendler here. I'm going to continue reading uh, The Ichabog by J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling's brand new exciting book that has only been released during lockdown and is only available electronically at the moment. So I've got it on my tablet, my Seagull class tablet, um, and I'm on www.theichabog.com website and you can just view each chapter on there which is really nice you can also zoom in and out so if you're a little bit blind like me it's quite handy uh, right let's get started then chapter two the Ichabog the legend of the Ichabog has been passed down by generations of marshlanders and spread by word of mouth all the way to Chokesville nowadays everybody knew the story naturally as with all legends it changed a little depending on who was telling it However, every story agreed that a monster lived at the very northmost tip of the country, in a wide patch of dark and often misty marsh, too dangerous for humans to enter. The monster was said to eat children and sheep. Sometimes it even carried off grown men and women who strayed too close to the marsh at night. The habits and appearance of the Ichabog changed depending on who was describing it. Some made it snake-like, others dragonish or wolf-like. Some said it roared, others that it hissed, and still others said that it drifted as silently as the mists that descended on the marsh without warning. The Ichabog, they said, had extraordinary powers. It could imitate the human voice to lure travellers into its clutches. If you tried to kill it, it would mend magically or else split into two Ichabogs. It could fly, spurt fire, shoot poison. The Ichabog's powers were as great as the imagination of the teller. Mind you, don't leave the garden while I'm working, parents all over the kingdom would tell their children, or the Ichabog will catch you and eat you all up. And throughout the land, boys and girls played at fighting the Ichabog, tried to frighten each other with the tale of the Ichabog, and even if the story became too convincing, had nightmares about the Ichabog. Now Bert Beamish was one such little boy with a family called the Dovetails. They came over for dinner one night. Mr Dovetail entertained everyone with what he claimed was the latest news of the Ichabog. That night, five-year-old Bert woke, sobbing and terrified from a dream in which the monster's huge white eyes were gleaming at him across a foggy marsh into which he was slowly sinking. There, there, whispered his mother, who tiptoed into his room with a candle and now rocked him backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards in her lap. There's no Ichabod, Bertie. It's just a silly story. But, 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 Mr Dovetail said sheep have g -g gone missing. <gasps> Hiccuped Bert. So they have said Mrs Beamish, but not because a monster took them. Sheep are foolish creatures. They wander off and get lost in the marsh. But, but, Mr Dovetail said p -p people disappear too. Only people who are silly enough to stray onto the marsh at night, said Miss Mrs Beamish. Hush now, Bertie, there's no monster. But, but, but Mr Dovetail said people heard voices outside their windows and in the morning their chickens had gone. Oh, Bertie, Mrs Beamish couldn't help but laugh. The voices they heard are ordinary thieves, Bertie, up in the marshlands. They pilfer from each other all the time. It's easier to blame the Ichabog than to admit their neighbours are stealing from them. Stealing? <gasps> gasped Bert, sitting up in his mother's lap and gazing at her with solemn eyes. Stealing's very naughty, isn't it, Mummy? It's very naughty indeed, said Mrs Beamish, lifting up Bert, placing him tenderly back into her warm bed and tucking him in. But luckily, we don't live near those lawless marshlanders. Then she picked up her candle and tiptoed back towards the bedroom door. Night, night, she whispered from the doorway. She'd normally have added, don't let the Ichabog bite, which is what parents across Concopia said to their children at bedtime. But instead, she said, Sleep tight. Bert fell asleep again and saw no more monsters in his dreams. 
It so happened that Mr Dovetail and Mrs Beamish were great friends. They'd been in the same class at school and had known each other all their lives. When Mr Dovetail heard that he'd given Bert nightmares, he felt incredibly guilty. As he was the best carpenter in all of Choxville, he decided to carve the little boy in Ichabog. Now this had a wide smiling mouth full of teeth and big clawed feet and at once it became Bert's favourite toy. If Bert or his parents or the dovetails next door or anybody else in the whole kingdom of Concopia had been told that terrible troubles were about to engulf Concopia all because of the myth of the Ichabog, they'd have laughed. They lived in the happiest kingdom in the world. What harm could the Ichabog do? Well, you'll have to tune in tomorrow for the next chapter. I hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget, there is a competition on the Ichabog website. You just need to click on competition and it tells you all about how you can enter the Ichabog illustration competition. So, JK Rowling is calling all budding artists and inviting you to help illustrate the Ichabog for her. Every day when chapters of the story are uploaded, she'll make suggestions for what you might like to draw or paint or to illustrate. You should let your imagination run wild. And if you scroll to the bottom of that page, you can just click on the link, enter UK competition and submit your entries there. Good luck and enjoy the rest of the Ichabog. Bye for now.